everyone welcome to the channel in this video we will discuss about the logic app http trigger we'll have a demonstration and see how do you define the logic app http trigger to use the http get and post request using your logic app workflow hi my name is rakesh suryavanshi and you are watching be a learner for this demonstration i am going to use the logic app standard so i have given I have created a logic app which is of type standard as you can see here for now I, and I have given it a name of my logic app as a logic app as a standard lab. Within this particular logic app I have two different workflows already created. So when you create a logic app HTTP workflow you get a URL which is of HTTP get or post depends upon what type of workflow HTTP workflow request type you have defined. With that URL, you can pass a request to that URL uh, on a Postman or any HTTP client. Like in this case, I have a Logic App workflow, uh, which workflow URL generated from my HTTP workflow. And the URL configuration is like your name of your Logic App, then your workflow name, trigger type, and then some encrypted uh, text at the end of your URL. Now, with that URL, when I pass, let's say, request, or which is a customer order payload in this case, then my workflow will accept this particular customer order pay payload and it will give me a response back based on the payload information which I'm passing it to here. For example, in this case, I'm passing the name as the Rakesh Suryavanshi, and the location is Manchester, so I'll pass it as a London, for example, and then contact it. Should I update as something else? Now, if I send this request, it will go to the logic app workflow, which is HTTP workflow. It will evaluate my work uh, payload and then it will send the response back after adding some more additional attribute depends upon my logic, right? So the, the bottom line is how do you create a logic app HTTP workflow? or uh, basically define uh, your web API quick and easy web API which returns your HTTP response back using the logic app. So this is just a quick demonstration. You can see that I got a response back uh, with the details which I have provided plus there are some additional uh, logic. For example, customer name is now, it has been combined both first name and last name. Now, how do you define that? So for this, I'll create a new workflow in my standard logic app. So this is a standard logic app which I'll be using to define the workflow. This is the same logic app which we were using in our previous demonstration. So I'll say HTTP workflow, you can give it any name. I'm creating a HTTP stateful workflow. So my workflow is ready. I'll go to the designer and here in the designer, as always, it's going to ask me to specify the trigger type. And as we are discussing about the HTTP trigger types, so I'll be using a built-in HTTP trigger to start with my Logic App Designer. So here in this case, I'm going to use this particular request option. So not this option, because I would like to use a HTTP request trigger type. So I'll use this option. And you can see that here I have a trigger option when a HTTP request is received. So you can see that, okay, what exactly your HTTP URL will look like. You cannot see right now unless I save it. Once I will save that, the URL will be generated which you can use it in your Postman. Now, what type of request your HTTP uh, or trigger should receive, that JSON schema you can define it here in this particular option. If you do not have a JSON schema, you just got a JSON with you, then what you can do is you can use that particular JSON to define the schema. So for example, this is the JSON I have it right now. So what I can do, I can click here on this particular option, use sample payload to generate the schema. I'll click here. I'll upload my JSON, which I have it. Click here on the generate a schema so with that json it has created a json schema you can see that the order number is saying that it is a type of string similarly contact and other properties within the contact such as the first name last name address and all other properties are basically generated as the string as well so depending upon the value it has generated the string type now 
we have further two important options such as the add parameter so first one is the method type so if i select this method type it is asking me okay whether this particular method is going to be of uh, or the http trigger type which it generate does it generates as in type of http get post or put type of request or delete type of request or uh, or by default it's going to be of, of course a post type so if you do not select this option by default your http trigger will uh, will be set up based on um, as an HTTP post because you are providing the request body so it will assume that it is going to be a HTTP post type of request but if you would like to change this to HTTP get for example then you can change it like this okay I'll save it that's it now if I just refresh this view or refresh this page or you can see that I have got the URL uh, which is having the similar format and then I, I got some some uh, shared access signature appended to this particular URL next I can now define my own workflow steps whatever steps I would like to define it for example let's say I would like to compose a JSON out of this particular workflow so what I can do now is I can say when uh, now I am getting an option when uh, HTTP request is received. So you got a HTTP entire body. You got a query option with query path parameter which you can select as an incoming request. You can have a uh, individual properties within that incoming message. So for example, I could say I would like to uh, generate the customer underscore name and that's going to be the combination of uh, which i can use the concat function and within the concat function i could i can say it's going to be a first name comma space and then it's going to be a last name for example okay yeah then i'll say okay and then that's my first property has been ready now i can have similarly i can say id so i'll use the same uh, customer id okay and this is my customer id and then customer id i'll use the same property and then i will say order id order id and i would say order id as n guid for example okay because I would like to generate a new order with that and then similarly I can say order date order date and here again I'll use some of the date time uh, functions uh, let's say date time function UTC now that's it and lastly I'll say order status which is equals to let's say done release okay so this is my uh, compose json option compose json or compose response and now this response i have to return because if i save this now it will throw me error uh, that this http trigger type needs to have a http response type selected otherwise you will get an error so here i can say that okay use this option response type is of 200 500 whatever type i would like to create so i can also say that http 201 uh, which is order created because i am we are, we are creating an order and then response i would say the output of my compose step or compose response step so i'll say yes i'll save it that's it now simply i can click here in this particular url I will change the previous URL with the new URL and the same JSON I'm going to pass. Let's say ID I'll pass 34 and let's hit the send button and see if it works. So it's not working. The reason for that is because the method type which we have selected in our case is a post a get type and here this is a post type that's why it is it says it doesn't found this particular request let me see if it is working with the get type yeah it says that call to a manual trigger with http request is not valid because request content must not include get head delete or other request 
the reason for that is because I should not use the get type here because I'm passing the request body. So let's use that as an post option for now for this particular demonstration. Okay, I will save this. That's it. Now, if I go back to our postman again, of course, I need to choose the option as a post this time around. And there you go. So we are getting a response back. It's the similar format what we have generated over there. You can see that order status is release, order ID, which is random order ID generated, order date, which is today's date. And then we have a customer name and customer ID as well. So based on this request, what we have received, we are confirming the order and returning it back from the HTTP trigger type. Uh, this is a very, very important and easiest way to implement the HTTP request response type in your workflow. And, and that, that is something which you'll, you'll highly uh, use in your integration program. I hope you have found this useful. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching it. See you next video.